When the gasoline in a car engine burns, up to 70% of the energy generated converts into heat. A lot of this heat goes out the exhaust system, but much of it stays heating up the engine. The car's cooling system prevents overheating. The system's key component is the radiator. A water and antifreeze mix absorbs the heat generated by the engine. The fluid then flows through the radiator's tubes to cool down. The tubes are made from paper-thin brass. Rollers bend the 4 centimeter wide strip into the shape of a flat tube. The tubing then runs through a vat of bubbling hot molten lead. As the tubing exits the vat, it runs through cold water that hardens the lead coating. A cutter then chops the tubing into pieces, the length of which varies according to the model of radiator. These are about 76 centimeters long. Meanwhile, another machine shapes a narrow strip of copper just one and a half millimeters thick into what are called cooling fins. As we'll see in slow motion, the machine folds the copper strip fan-like, then perforates it, creating mini air vents. When the hot fluid runs through the tubes, these fins will transfer the heat to the air flowing through the radiator. The cooled fluid can then go back for another round of absorbing engine heat. The cooling fins come out of the machine cut to size. Then workers manually stack the tubes and fins one on top of the other. They straighten them out then apply a brass tag indicating the model number and date of production. Then they compress and strap the components together. Elsewhere, a computer-guided machine punches out a pattern on brass sheets. These will become what are called headers. There's one on each side of a radiator. The punching tool then changes to a knife, which now cuts along the perforation lines. Using a press, they bend each header, then punch slots for the radiator's tubes. Now, using a mallet, they hammer the headers onto the ends of the tubes. The banging inadvertently closes a few tubes, so they use a special roller to reopen them. After cleaning the surface, it's into an oven at 315 degrees Celsius. In just two minutes, the lead melts, fusing the tubes and cooling fins. After straightening out any crooked tubes, workers dip the headers in a tank of hot liquid lead for 30 seconds. This solders them to the sides of the radiator. They apply a few drops of lead on the corners for reinforcement. The headers and tube openings are now encased in lead. Workers now feed a sheet of brass into a press to form the tanks that go onto the headers. One contains a brass tube. Hot transmission oil enters one end of it and exits the other, cooling along the way. Once workers finish welding the tanks to the headers, they solder on what's called the filler neck, a spout for pouring antifreeze into the tank. On the opposite tank, they weld on a water intake pipe. This will be the entry point for the fluid heated by the engine. Finally, they coat the finished radiator in an asphalt-based black paint. The asphalt content makes the paint heat resistant and protects the radiator's cooling fins.